one thing I would like to cover is talking about your 401ks. Most of my clients have 401k plans. I watched this one video by a um, gentleman. His name is Jerry Feta. And he has something very unique. Um, he's all about 10x. He likes the infinite banking concept. He likes velocity banking. He likes using credit cards, you know, pay off debt and accelerate debt. He talks about investing um, a lot more than I do. And he covered, um, and I'll, I'll be sure to have a link in the description um, that talks, that will send you to his video. But I basically, I'm just going to like steal his numbers here. He talks about the 401k and how expensive it really is to have a 401k versus the amount of money that you know you would make from a 401k. So I hope this was super valuable for you guys, especially for some of my new students. This is a great great comparison to share with your family, you know, or even with the spouse. I know for this gentleman, um, I think he has his wife included. Yes, he does. But I have, another, I have some clients that do not have their, spouse, their spouse's um, income included in their Velocity Banking scenario. So unfortunately, what does that do? That, you know, it doesn't, we're, we're not maximizing every dollar in the house, right? So it's like, you know, if you're not on the same page with your spouse, that can cause some conflict in the household, right? You would agree? Especially if it's wife that's not on board, right? We want to make sure that we at least have wife on board uh, or husband on board. The two of you guys working together with money like this. Because when you have two different mindsets, it can you can be pulling it's not fun so regarding the 401k and this will be quick um, and this is something that you guys ought to do if you have a 401k a 403b a TSP a SEP uh, IRA uh, whatever right all these acronyms right here isn't it here is a, uh, a taste or just kind of getting an idea of what you actually pay on these things, right? So I was, you know, trying to get some accurate numbers here. So like I said, I got these numbers from Wealth Dynamics, very credible company. I like what they do. I like what they, um, you know, talk about and encourage people to think differently the same way that I do. So when you put money into a 401k, you have the front end fee right the initial fee the upfront fee wh whatever they call it let's call it a front end fee three percent i would say on average then you've got the annual fee right which is something that you pay on the entirety of the account so he put 1.25 percent and then you have the tax rate of the individual 22 percent these numbers are based off someone making a hundred thousand a year and they're contributing i think it was like nineteen thousand like max funding in the 401k and then this three percent is inflation i know some will say inflation is two percent but that's irrelevant the number can change right so if they were to fund this thing for 33 years, all right, and let me just make sure I have this correct. So funding 33 years, 19,500 per year would equal 643,500 in principle is what would have went 
into your 401k plan, someone making 100 grand a year, and you're max funding your 401k, 643,500 in principle. And you would make, I think if you were, I think averaging 8% return, I believe it was that he used. I think he used it, yeah. Could be higher. 8% return or higher, whatever. Obviously, you got lows and highs throughout this account. I believe the number was you'll have about like 5.5 million over 33 years. Something like that. 5.5 million. It's a lot of money. But you would pay about 2 million in fees, right? So you would pay about 2 million in fees, which is just insane to me personally, right? So what, what happens is when you're earning this supposedly average rate of return, what most people are not factoring in is the fees that come with the 401k, the tax rate, right, that you're currently at, and the rate that you'll be at. So this rate would go up. So when you get older, the taxes would be higher. And that's why it's so important for you to actually try and make more money throughout your life. Make it differently. Make it differently, not personal, but business. You want to run your wealth and income as much as you can through business or capital gains, right? Or royalties rather than personal because personal is the highest tax rate. Ordinary tax, personal, ordinary income tax, however that works. So you're going to get busted up, right? Just on the tax rate. Now you have to worry about inflation, what, whether the number is 1%, 2%, 3%. You have to understand that that number compounds just like the fees. Same thing with this 1.25% annual. That compounds. So 1.25 in the first year on 19,500 alone, right? It's $243.75. Add another 19.5 and times that by 1.25. That number will double and then double and then double and double and double every single year. And the number will, will keep increasing even if you lose money in the account, right? Because you're gonna have years where you lose money. Don't think you're not gonna lose money in a 401k, you will, all right? And Warren Buffett says not to lose money. So you have that to worry about. Same thing with the inflation. That number compounds itself, right? So, and then the worst part about this 5.5 million is in 33 years, 5.5 million will buy you much less than 5.5 million today. So your, your purchasing power would, would be significantly significantly less, right, in 33 years than today, all right? And this goes back to my point, when you're doing velocity banking, other unique ways of increasing cash flow for a temporary period of time is I can put that money in my velocity banking strategy and save interest on those current debts that you're paying today that you're getting charged interest today. So in addition to these fees that you have to worry about for the account itself, you then also have to worry about the fees and interest that you're paying on all your debts. So some say, oh, invest and pay off debt. Well, I would say, huh, where are you investing? Because for me, to invest, I do not want growth when I invest. I want multiplication when I invest, not growth. Growth just means rate of return. 
Multiplication means I put a dollar in, I get two back. I put 20 in, I get 40 back. I put 20,000 in, I get 40,000 back. That's multiplication, right? Return is I put 20,000 in, I get 600 one year. And then, you know, 1250 the next, and then 2350 the next. And it, no, no, that's not how you should be investing money because that money is only going to break even. So basically what ends up happening is you, after all these years, you basically break even, right? Because now you have to factor in when you start to withdraw the money, how much are you going to withdraw per year? Are you gonna do this at age 59 and a half, right? How long is that gonna last you, right? So 5.5 million minus 2 million in fees alone, right? All these, all this stuff. And then you have to minus the value of the dollar from 3.5 million, the inflation and taxes. Taxes is going to kill you. Let's just say 3.5 million times 22%. That's $770,000 that you'll pay in taxes if the rate stood the same. It's gonna go up, so that number will be higher. <laughs> so what, uh, uh, let me do it again. 3.5 million minus, say, 700, right? 50,000 in taxes. Now you're left with 2.75 million. Now you have to deal with the inflation. The purchasing power is much less. But let's just say you borrow $100,000 to live on per year. Right, whether you take that out monthly as a monthly stream of income, how long is $100,000 going to be valued at? Now the problem is $100,000 in today's money, according to my friend that made this video with inflation and taxes and everything, that in order to live on $100,000 of money worth today, you would actually need to take out, you would actually need to take out 268,000, so let me write that down, that this 100,000, 33 years later, you would have to withdraw. 268, 791, and 17 cents. So you'd have to withdraw that much money out per year to live on whatever $100,000 is worth today, okay? So 268, 791, 17, divided by 12, basically taking out 22,000 a month to live on, right? Granted, hopefully all your debt's paid off by then and you can use this money to basically live on, right? So um, what is it? So if I got, say, 2.8 million after all that money uh, divided by 268,791.17, my money would last me 10 years after 59, okay? And there are so many statistics right now of retired individuals running out of money and having to go back into the workplace, which then takes jobs from the younger people, right? That need those jobs. You're, you're taking, the older people are taking jobs that you really, really shouldn't be working. You should be retired. You should be done. <laughs> should be enjoying the rest of your days, right? Or have something to give back to in life. Have some sort of service work that you do or whatever the case may be. But if you took out 100,000 to live on, 100,000 divided by 12, that's 8,300. So if you took out 100,000, 2 point, right, 2.8 million uh, divided by 100,000, that'll last you 28 years. And that's really unrealistic because that number isn't really worth $100,000 anymore 33 years from now, 
right? If you were to, you know, you start at a younger age or whatever, and then, you know, let's see, 59 minus 33. So you started at age 26, right? And it's worse if you start at age 30, you start at age 40, and, and you try to fund it. You're really not going to have much to work with. So even with, wow, I almost fell. So even with, you know, that time period, even if it did survive 28 years, check it out, 59 plus 28. You're only 87 years old, only. People are living longer, well into their 90s, right? So if you were relying on that and maybe some other funds, maybe you worked at the government and they, maybe they have a pension plan left, so maybe that'll help. But look how, ugh, it's kind of scary, man. And that, that maybe that's just to live on. What about to enjoy life? <laughs> and its pleasures. And what about to give? I don't see much room to give. I don't see much room to invest. I don't see much room to uh, pass on to the next generation, right? You're not even thinking about that. What are we passing on to the next generation, right? So that's, there's a lot to consider there. So that 19,500, in someone's scenario, whoever's watching, could have been used to wipe out whatever bad debt you had now. Do velocity banking, get debt free in about five to seven years, right? And then 10X your income at least one time during your life, right? Just do that, just 10X. Go from making 100,000 to 1 million a year. And then you would have way more money to work with. And then what happens is when you do access a higher income bracket, you get access to different kinds of information where you'll start looking at the infinite banking concept, right? You'll start looking at real estate more. Actual real estate, not REITs, not, you know, 401k plans. Like you'll start looking at real cold hard cash flow that's what you'll start looking at more than anything instead of investing stocks you're going to be investing in dividend paying stocks you're just going to get access to different information you know and that'll be powerful for you